Hello all, how are you doing? This is my Instagram live with the authors of The Leap Frog, Six Practices to Thrive at Work. Um, I am just going to wait for everybody to join in and then we will invite the authors, Mr. Mukesh and Mr. Priyank in with us. Hi, how's everyone? Hope you had a good week. Hello. Ready for the weekend? We're looking forward to a very exciting conversation with the authors of The Leap Frog, the book that I absolutely enjoy reading a lot. Hi everyone, hello. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you're all doing well. I am going to request the authors of The Leap Frog to join us now. book called Leap Frog, Six Practices, Practices to Thrive at Work. I'm very excited of all the concepts, all the great stuff that you need to know to actually thrive and be successful at work. We will be talking about that in detail today. Hi. Hi, Hi there. Hello. Hey, good to see you. Hello. Uh, good to see you too. Um, Mukesh, sir, and Priyank, sir. No, no, I, just, I don't know if I should no call need, you, sir. No need, no need. Those things are fine. <laughs> okay, wonderful, wonderful. I can see the book there uh, behind you. Uh, if you can please uh, point to it and show the audience that Absolutely. that's the book we are referring yes. to today. Yes, sure the lead sure frog. Yeah. Wonderful. Yay, yay. I'm so excited to be talking to you both. I, I firstly want to thank you for joining uh, us today and having a conversation this Friday evening. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, likewise, I'm really excited likewise. to be talking to you. Wonderful. So uh, I'll just give a quick introduction about both of you. Um, so uh, Mukesh Sood and Priyank Narayan, they are the authors of this book called Leapfrog. They're both, uh, firstly, your journey is so inspiring. You're both such academics and uh, you've had great careers uh, working with organizations and working on your own. And uh, I think you, you're both uh, professors at renowned universities. You, uh, Mukesh, sir, you graduated from IIT and Priyank, uh, sir, you graduated from IIM. So it's so, uh, so inspiring to be talking to both of you. And I'm sure our audience has a lot to learn from you today. If there's anything that I've missed, please, if you would like to introduce yourselves before we get started, that would be great as well. Um, okay. Yeah, so Mukesh, sir, should we start with you? And you're good to go. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. Uh, okay, great. Yep. So should we should we begin with the book yes. then? Okay, great, great. So uh, let's talk a little bit about you know how you actually sat down to write this book and how did you come together to write this book? If you can just give us a little bit of uh, history there, like what made you write this uh, this uh, topic? You know, which is very uh, insightful and necessary in today's world because so many of us uh, in our corporate careers especially and even as uh, new entrepreneurs struggle to become successful at work. So I'm sure there was this thing in you that you wanted to share with everybody. So how did it, how did the, the book happen? We'd love so the to book know. is a collaborative effort between both of us as individuals and we are now friends. We've known each other for the last seven or eight years and of our two institutions. Um, uh, Priyank uh, or I would say Ashoka University wanted a course to be taught here. I am Amdabad raised their hand and said we can do it. And I was deputed to do it. So Priyank and me met, um, as Priyank described very eloquently, on a wintry morning on the IIM Ahmedabad campus. And uh, we started talking to each other. Um, I had a daughter who was studying at Ashoka. So Priyank's offer, come down to Ashoka, come and visit. I said, sure, I'll meet my daughter. <laughs> and then once I came here, uh, Priyank took things forward. So I think the idea really is that you know over the many years that we've been teaching uh, together at ashoka we've been getting a lot of interesting inputs from our students our alums recruiters as to what's working for them at at the workplace right what's helping them grow what's helping them thrive at work and uh, we tried to put all of this together into nuggets and call them six practices that's going to help you thrive at work the second part of what actually excited us to put this book together is that there is a lot of research that's available out there, which is very difficult to read and very difficult to consume by an average uh, reader. We've tried to 
make all of that very accessible through uh, through the various mm. stories that we've given in the book um because we felt that research is is lost because very few people read research papers and most of these people who would read read our research papers are our phd students so uh you know it becomes a little bit of self defeating in terms of just expecting people to learn from published papers so we have uh, tried to bring that research uh to a more consumable form uh, by putting this book together so that's that's the general background there's one other interesting a part uh, here which i think it's important that our our uh, sort of listeners and and viewers are, are understanding that both i am amdabad and and ashoka they are classrooms that are not accessible by a large number of people um for various reasons because they are selective in in the way we get our students in and can we hmm. create a platform where the conversations that are happening in our classrooms be accessible and available to a larger audience uh you know why keep it privileged it should be available to everybody and this was an opportunity to make our uh, sort of message our stories our conversations available to many many more people so i i really hope that uh, the book is a platform for uh, a lot of people to get a sneak peek into what we talk about in our classrooms that's beautiful uh, priyank thank you and that's so powerful uh, you know what you said is not everybody gets the opportunity the uh, the honor and the privilege to be a part of these reputed institutions and and what you're trying to do is uh, through this book is is just it's beautiful and I, i i personally want to say that i really enjoyed reading your book because like you said it's yeah. full of these nuggets you know it's full of real life examples research broken down into actual uh, like they sound like it's like a friend <laughs> talking to you it sounds almost like that uh, not telling these stories uh, so you never get bored through through reading these yeah. heavy research papers which you've actually uh, mm -hmm. broken down into simple actionable steps as well and i loved how each chapter started with like three pillars of you know understanding the concept behind each chapter and even i i want to say i you've been quite creative coming up with the chapter titles <laughs> i love them uh you know how it, it dance with the disciplines and curate the chaos i just love i love right. how you've shown your creativity and design thinking uh, there so i i think for a reader uh, as someone who reads tons of self help books i want to say that this is one of the most well researched and uh, well put together books that i've read uh, thank you so very Good well done. thank, thank you, you so much, much for sharing all your wisdom uh, wisdom with the world so uh, shall we uh, jump into yeah. you know some of the concepts that you've covered in the book uh, because uh, i talk to a lot of students uh, one on one so I, uh, to help mm -hmm. them with with their careers and give them career uh, tips and career guidance and some of these uh, concepts that you've talked about in the book are actually concerns yeah. that many of the students actually come to me with so so i could really imagine a 20 21 year old reading the book and actually you know uh, gaining these uh, you know understanding these hidden gems from what you actually shared with them so let's uh, let's uh, start with the first one is that uh, you know you talked about nudging yourself in in your in the second chapter of nudge yourself and uh, i think many of us actually don't end up doing that uh, in the professional work now we can talk about uh you know our personal lives of course if you want to maintain a more healthy uh, lifestyle there there are ways to you know nudge yourself to stop yourself from doing certain things but even at the work workplace you know we have to sometimes have like that push that we have to nudge ourselves to let's say talk about a promotion or talk about a raise or maybe uh, talk about the project that we are interested in with our manager what suggestion would you give to somebody who is not comfortable doing that and what right. can they do to actually start nudging so themselves i think the first step mehdi uh, step let's get the whole concept of nudging out of just the workplace right so there is nudging that you do in your everyday life right there is what kind of food do you like what you keep uh, what mm. is visible to you what you keep on your table what you keep um, around you is the kind of food that you'll end up eating how much are you exercising how much are you playing a sport or playing a, uh, or enjoying a music instrument that you want to practice right the access accessibility to these so a classic story that we've given in the book is can you keep the guitar next to you instead of locked up into the loft uh if you really want to learn and play the guitar right so you have yeah. to understand yeah. how you are spending your time how what will trigger a reaction from you and what is actually going mm. to you know lead you to a certain behavior and this 
as a concept yeah. will then be applicable to your workplace now like you talked about specifics on you know talking about talking to your boss reaching out to uh, you know getting things done one of the ways nudges actually work is to make commitments to yourself which become public so for example uh, you know as classic story of giving up smoking where somebody is actually posted on their facebook saying hey i'm going to give up smoking this new year and and that becomes yeah. uh, a commitment to yourself that you've made publicly and it it nudges you because you you created this whole thing around you know i'm going to lose face if i don't uh, quit smoking by new year's uh, you you mm. going to uh, push yourself to create all kinds of checks and balances to avoid that so yeah there are various ways you can do this but most importantly what is it that's triggering a behavior from you and if you can start identifying those Yeah. then you start working on nudges from there so other examples you given in the book are you know using a smaller spoon to eat slowly it's it's something mm. so simple yes i i not, remember not not many of us yeah. uh do that uh very often right um we've talked about uh, how shops actually nudge you to buy certain things because of the way they have displayed things mm. um, around you right so what whenever you are being nudged by somebody else you can apply the similar thing to yourself and say can i apply that uh, to my life and my context so we use the example of an airline pilot where virgin atlantic wanted to save on on uh, atf on aviation turbine fuel and they nudged their pilots by telling them look you are we are watching you we are observing you we are giving you feedback and just being told that you are being observed we call it the hawthorn effect they just being told you being observed makes you change your behavior um in your personal life i give you the example of just flossing your teeth we many people do that after a meal so that they then stagger the time out before the next meal because they enjoy having a clean mouth so acknowledging and realizing yeah. your deficiencies and we all have our limitations and working around them yes. can make yes. you nudge yourself i love that i love that actually uh is making me want to take my guitar out of my storage <laughs> store room and start uh, playing it whenever i get the time you you're right i think it's when it's in front of you then you also yeah. feel accountable a little, little bit and i i guess it's also about nudging yourself yeah, till yeah, it becomes yeah. a habit maybe uh, and then you really don't Absolutely. need to nudge yourself anymore um so so that's fantastic uh, that's great um and and i think uh, just pivoting from here uh, because you know there are so many things that are happening in our lives like we achieve great things uh we at work and even outside of work that we somehow become very confident in in ourselves being you know very sure of who we are uh but you talk about this in an, in a, in another chapter is about being intellectually humble and i think that's such a uh, two beautiful words that you've joined together and sounding intellectually humble sounds so nice could you please explain the concept to us a little bit and how can one actually be intellectually it's mukesh's okay, favorite uh, chapter so I'll, <laughs> i'll i'll let him start this one <laughs> so it's the recognition yeah, that you may be a specialist in your own domain your own field but there are lots of fields you don't know much about and be able to recognize and you know we use the concept of strong ideas loosely held so you have a strong idea but you're willing to trade it exchange it discuss it with somebody else and uh, we also talk about uh, things like um, a big ego and a small ego where i have a big ego about yes. things i know well but i'm willing to listen to a contrary point of view and um, work on the advantages i can get from that so uh, these are not um, uh, opposites really uh, they are they it feed into each other and now now large companies we give the example of ideo this company based in silicon valley who do, does yes. a lot of work with um, with apple uh, how they want people from various mm. backgrounds uh, they make their offices look like kindergarten playrooms uh, where there are toys where they are um, having wow. fun where they are yeah. doing cr- what looks like crazy stuff and they come out with good ideas yeah yeah that, that's uh, that's amazing uh, mukesh it's about bringing people together from different backgrounds that's what you know diverse thinking and when they challenge each other and and like you said being aware that you your opinion may not be the right opinion you may not know everything uh, happening no, in not only that, the field of work and that's why you are faced with right. problems that are not easy even easy to define where they have no solution for example the pandemic or climate change 
but acknowledging that these so called wicked problems yeah. which are problems without a solution you have to live with them now how can you look yeah. at um, the pandemic from a medical point of view from a psychological point of view from an wage earners point of view from a literacy point of view can you see how many things are in that pandemic so um, intellectual yeah. humility is to recognize that you need to have more creative tools uh, to address these problems mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Uh, thank you, um, Kesh. Uh, Priyank, would you like yeah, to add so something think, to that? Yeah, so I think you know we are we are talking about intellectual humility, but we are also talking about multiple disciplines coming together, and I think that's an important part, right? Mm. So you would, unless you are intellectually humble, you will not appreciate different disciplines and the power of another discipline coming together. And there are two separate chapters that we have actually talked about. One is about intellectual humility, mm -hmm. but the other is. what we call uh, you know when ideas have sex which is really about intersecting yes. ideas uh, it. it's about getting you know people yes, from yes. different disciplines to come together and and share and collaborate mm -hmm. and i think one important part of new age education which uh, is coming about is that it's no longer about being a specialist in just one it's about out having what we call mm. as a t shape profile right so you 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 go deep into one but you also have the ability yeah. to collaborate across many others um and to some extent what we are teaching at ashoka as a liberal arts institution is really the ability to work across disciplines to to intersect across mm -hmm. and and appreciate the beauty of different disciplines coming together but having said that and you know people who who have not gone through a liberal arts education can actually benefit by going beyond their comfort zone we all become very comfortable with the discipline that we've studied that we, that's close to our heart that we would want to mm. build a career in yeah. that we think is going to be the future how many of us are willing to pick up let's say an online course in a completely opposite uh, you know discipline or contrary discipline mm -hmm. we call this contra disciplinary mm. uh education or contra disciplinary learning and that changes perspectives you may not seem it doesn't seem obvious at that point of time but give yourself time to brew those ideas and over a period of time you start seeing and making connections which are different from what the usual mainstream you know people are making and that's what differentiates you as a profile out there so so i'll give you an example for example digital humanities and this is something we've talked about in the book as well is a intersection of computer mm -hmm. science and literature and they are essentially looking at wow. literature very differently they're putting a lot of the classic literature let's mm -hmm. say shakespeare all of shakespeare's volumes have been put into the computer and the computer is now finding trends in the way words have been used in the way uh, you know expressions have been made for example you know you could study how shakespeare or at that point of time in that era uh, you know uh, gender was studied and from, from this mm. discipline mm. you are actually creating more and more uh, insights which literary or uh, people who study literature never actually had so computers are actually helping mm. uh, you know develop mm. some of these at stanford there is a very interesting course which is called music and computer science so can you actually fuse your two completely contrary fields to come together and create if i may say music uh, which the world hasn't heard or, or or listened to so there are there are lots of opportunities you know this these are just two examples of what is happening and we see lots happening in our classrooms every day there is a student who is studying history and physics now it's wow. it's it's a very powerful combination right because you're you're able to study history but at the same time you're able to see the advancements of science and then you make connections between the two and it opens your mind up to a very very different level of problem solving so i think that's the power of of what we are talking about here i love that priyanka and mukesh i think what you're saying is in fact it should be the future of education also right because uh technology uh, is also going to have such a large impact on our careers and and the way mm -hmm. we think of work because probably the careers that exist Absolutely. right now didn't exist Absolutely. let's say 20 years ago like i'm sitting here uh, in another part of the world talking to, having a conversation with you you know this kind of a conversation probably wouldn't even be yeah. possible to imagine <laughs> maybe 20 years ago so that's what's going to happen with careers also you know in 10 20 years these uh, technology yeah. is going to have an impact on every 
discipline every field so i love how you're you know you talk about this in your book also which is liberal education and maybe we can touch upon uh, that also a little bit what 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 exactly is liberal education or how is it different from let's say uh, traditional right. education so you know, liberal education is just the approach to what you are studying so you can liberally study engineering oh. you can liberally study science it's not that liberal arts are the only topics being covered it's the approach to the topic where you know the amount of knowledge that you have let's say in engineering today is going to rapidly change over time so you can't assume that all knowledge is there for you to understand once and for all and then that will carry you through your career so the liberal approach is oh. that i will study a number of disciplines see how they integrate together and use the tools of one discipline on another discipline like priyank mentioned about digital humanities uh, today our mba classrooms yeah. we intentionally house them with students from multiple backgrounds so we want the liberal arts students inside an mba classroom we want the doctor we want the anthropologist yes we primarily have engineers but it's by mixing various disciplines together and allowing people with various points of view the lawyer the artist to come forward that conversations become much richer and most of management education today is through the case study approach where the instructor doesn't come with mm. a lecture and slides but you read a case which is a real life situation yeah. and then you analyze it and the instructor just guides the discussion and brings out facets um, but you have been doing that for a long time mm. here now yeah i think one element i'd like to add to this is that uh, the importance of critical thinking right critical thinking is your ability to analyze and synthesize the problem and and actually focus on identifying the problem yeah. more than finding you know perspectives or solutions around it so liberal arts education is mm-hmm. focused on critical thinking and that critical thinking can be taught through any discipline so you don't have to do critical thinking only in history or philosophy or sociology any discipline uh, could yeah. help you develop that critical thinking skill a good part of it is also command on language yeah. which i think we need to f- emphasize more and more and more because you know ultimately uh, that's a, a skill which is which will take you places so i think that that those are the few things which liberal arts education focuses on i love that and i think you also talk about this in your book that uh, uh, how it's important to have conversations with people who are yes. not from the yes. same background as you uh, right and and that's when these ideas come to life is is uh, so if i'm i'm actually an accountant by profession a chartered accountant so if i go and talk to a lawyer or a doctor there may be some kind of an idea that maybe we come up with a business idea for the future you know you never know like until you you push yourself outside your comfort zone and have a chat yeah. with somebody who's not like you and yeah. then those uh, the ideas come and the whole and concept of diversity and corporations valuing diversity is stemming from this they want people who yeah. don't think alike and it's important that yeah. at, at school and college level also we hang out with people who don't think alike or at least create an opportunity to intersect with people who mm. don't think alike that's that's the broad objective and you know yeah. we can go granular into it but really this is what it's about Yeah, so everyone watching, please push yourself to have a chat with somebody who is completely different from you, and uh, maybe not from the same city, from the same kind of educational background, with the same kind of privileges as, as you. And you never know how much you will get to learn from that, you know, that one conversation. Great. Actually, let's uh, talk a little bit uh, about EQ versus IQ, um, uh, and if you can just touch upon what. why is it important and anything you want yeah. to share on on that on so you know there are many cues that have developed over a period of time so eq iq spiritual quotient your your ability to your relationship quotient all of those things and i think all all of it basically comes down to how strong are you with being able to manage emotions right how strong are you able to think beyond just um what it means for yourself so like in the book we've talked about having a different perspective we've talked about you know having grit hmm. um, and determination to drive uh, your point forward right so the long and short of all of this may add that there is no shortcut to hard work and the the hard work comes hmm. from your ability to sustain and persevere over a period of time on your goal on the same goal right so it's the it's the length with which you can stick to one particular thing and that's important um and that 
comes from your ability to mm. manage your emotions right and we've given an example of managing yeah. boredom you know we all get bored very easily we all want to be entertained all the time yeah. and and the smartphone is is an easy excuse to keep ourselves engaged and entertained and this generation which is not never seen not having an, a phone in their hand actually feels the need to be entertained even more and one of the things we've talked about is that it's okay to accept boredom it's okay to be bored and figure out how you will keep yourself engaged in the same task without switching gears without saying okay i give up because i'm bored see boredom is a part of learning so please accept it and move yeah. forward with it and and you know so the eq part of it actually plays a very important role in all of this the iq is there and you know iq is something which uh, it's developed over a period of time you you can you know do a lots of drills and exercises to to develop it so there is there is a there is a method to it yeah. but at the same time it's important to also develop your sort of grit uh and your ability to to stay consistent with whatever you want to do you know one of the chapters we asked this question are yeah, mestros yes. born or made and then we look at um, we look yeah. at mozart the musician and then we try and analyze his past and how he became what he became and we find that yes there was definitely some mm. talent and a lot of talent there but it was what he went through so his father was a professional musician a music teacher the exposure that he got and we use that in a number of such examples mm. that uh, you need to both have an aptitude towards something but much more important persevere with it and uh, um, be in the right yes. situation we talk of deliberate practice where you know the conventional uh, thought mm. is that if you do something 10000 times you become an expert well it's not true at all you need to keep improving in every iteration mm. and we give the simple uh, number yes. you know 1.01 to the power 365 makes you 30 40 yes. times better yes whereas if you repeat the same thing again and again and again you are not doing justice to to what your abilities are yeah yeah definitely there's no growth there then uh, you just do the same making the same mistake so you need an expert to thing. point that out to yeah. you. you need to work with an expert will point out that look make this minor adjustment and a yeah. 1% adjustment every time is not very substantial you we can yeah. all do it but over a period of a year yeah. by repeating the same thing you are becoming yes. um you know 30 40 times better Wait. yeah yeah wonderful that's uh, that's fantastic uh just um, you know just continuing what uh, with what you said uh, priyank about you know us having a cell phone in our hands and constantly being distracted and i'm guilty of that <laughs> notifications are uh, ruling That's my okay. life uh, but uh, you know you talk about this in your book is just it's about focusing on the essential because there will always be thousand of things that you want to be yeah. focusing on you want to be doing but what what is it what does it mean by focusing on the essential and how does one so really this is that? coming from our chapter on curation right and i think um, it's a skill that we often don't give enough importance to and it's becoming more and more relevant given the amount of data that has been thrown at us and how we are being subjected to you know it's a problem of plenty right so you have so much around you uh, and you have access to so much yeah. that you need to actually uh, be able to curate what's relevant to you right part of it is creating a choice architecture how are you presenting choices to yourself how are you actually being able to make that is a classic story that we've given in in the book is a research which says there is a there are two uh, sort of tables of jams one has six flavors the other one has 36 flavors right which fla- mm. which table will you be happier making a purchase decision and the answer is very clear that the the table which has six actually people are able to buy more and they are also happier with their choice while youngsters are always on their phone there's also something called fomo which is the fear of missing out <laughs> if there are too many choices yes then have yes. i missed out on a great choice so hmm. whenever you're presenting information whenever you're looking at data whenever you're looking at the abundance in the world try to bring your choices in a structured way that you are you are able to make right decisions create a choice architecture for yourself hmm. which is going to be meaningful to you that's yes. going to help you make the right decision and also be happier with the decision that you make and that's the core of uh, what we're talking about here see we have used the concept of detecting and debunking bullshit because today 
the amount of noise all around and to get to the essential and to be able to declutter all the noise around you and say this is just not something that's true at all and then uh, uh, focusing on the essential and we give the example of uh, mary kondo we give the example of a sushi chef where he they just do one yes. thing for years and years and years till they become an expert at it i love that that i love that i'm i'm just thinking of the days i switch on netflix <laughs> and i go through all the shows and uh, movies i want to watch and i can't decide and i just switch yes. it off and another example <laughs> that i am not using we're uh, not using I, the book we that we if we have colleagues who will put on a netflix show and watch 15 or 20 short excerpts because they can't decide what to watch yeah. and then the hour of viewing is over yeah, that's uh, <laughs> exactly yeah. so a lot <laughs> exactly, of us do that exactly. yeah i relate with that <laughs> I relate with that. I think uh, that's what you are saying. Mm. You're having a structure, coming like narrowing down in some way, so that you can focus on the things that matter and watch the show or the genre. And, that and you there really are a few enjoy, maybe, right? the like, tricks that we've given thrillers. to do that in the book. So for that, they'll have to get the book. book. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please, please do get the book <laughs> to read the secret formula <laughs> to choose your Netflix show. Uh, what you need to watch next. Uh, okay, so we are just coming towards the end. Um, I just have two final questions from you. I think we've touched upon uh, one, but if if there's just a one final tip on what you think is the benefit of actually having a diverse network, we've talked about uh, you know going up to people and talking and ha- coming up with ideas, but but you know not many people feel comfortable doing that, having a diverse network or even the whole idea of networking. Uh, if you had to give you know a push to somebody that you know this is the advantage of so i'll i'll give the example of being an entrepreneur because entrepreneurs are famous for leveraging what we call as opr other people's resources mm-hmm. and it's not, not what you know mm-hmm. or what you have but whom you know and what they have so networks are critical to entrepreneurs because they are always asking they they don't take a no they keep asking they have the humility to keep asking and till they get the answer so i think uh, one which is mm. the final chapter in our book that think like an entrepreneur have the audacity to ask and uh, keep asking and we've given a number of examples of that and um, i think that's one of the key things what do you think prem no absolutely i think uh, you know you, you the world is moving at a pace that if you are not connecting connected with the larger ecosystem you won't be able to survive so it's become a, a necessity today to be able to network to be able to leverage like mukesh said other people's resources and also at the same time make your resources available to them because otherwise it's it's not going to work over a period of time so i think uh, it's a core skill and if if there are people out there who find it difficult there are various ways and we've given some ideas but there are various ways to actually develop that and build that and and make a little bit of effort towards it because it's something that's going to be important to uh, to thrive. Yeah, so sociologists have discovered that if your friends friends friend loses weight, the chances of you all joining a gym have just shot up by 10 or 15 or 20%. So you can imagine wow. and that friends friends wow. friend is person you don't even know the name, you don't even know the person. So habits are contagious, wow. happiness wow. is contagious and uh, we need to to yes. to be aware that your 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 uh, social relationships that you have are key to the kind of person you are they say you are defined by your friends because the choices that you make are very often yes. the choices that your friends tell you that they have made very true that's so so true uh, you are the some of the top 6 yeah. people in your life is or yeah. something is the code right uh, i i think that's so important and as the year comes to an end it's important that we reflect on the people in our lives and who are we spending time with um and cut off from the ties that are, are you know, not serving us in any yeah. way and mm. and find those five yeah the toxic uh, the toxic kind of relationships in people and and find the ones that actually you know push you up to do your best and and become better that's uh, that's great one final question from me is actually on uh, something you just uh, talked about and segueing into that is that uh, you you said this in the book if you yeah. never ask the answer will always be no uh, right and uh, so many of us uh, I just and I've been in that place where I was just so afraid of speaking up, especially at work. Uh, but what what is that tip you would give to somebody who you know needs that who who should be actually going up to somebody and talking about themselves and asking for something? Uh, what 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 would yeah, you say? Yeah, that's a typical entrepreneurial approach to ask for help 
and keep asking till you get it and we started the book that the, the chapter with the three or four examples where uh, somebody was trying to make dog collars and trying to rescue pets uh, in pune and then he writes a letter to mr tata and mr tata then invites him to come to his office and then he starts a company so uh, we'll give the example of steve wow. jobs he picks up the telephone directory and he looks for hewlett packard now hewlett mr packard was a big name at that time and all he picks up the phone and says i'm yes. 14 years old i want parts to make a frequency counter and guess what <laughs> mr packard is, is is really dumbfounded but amused and says come over son and then he gets a job so we give you examples like this where you need to keep asking and uh, not have an ego about it and entrepreneurs are doing it all the time because they don't fear failure many of us fear that you want to talk yes. about that priyank well i think failure is one part of it uh, mayor but i also want to leave the the viewers with a with a bit of a positive sense that in general the world is happy to help yeah. and uh, you know you need to go out there and ask for that help uh, and you need to uh, have the confidence that uh, if you are uh, convinced enough about the help that you need there will be uh, help that will come to you but you need to be out there asking for that help right um so so be positive about what you want to achieve and 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 go out there and ask for it and and there will be some way that you will that will that help will come to you um so i think it's a, it's a it's a positive way of looking at life and the resources that you need to achieve whatever you want to do you know, i've seen this with personal experience that when you ask for help you, the unstated uh, exchange is that there's something you have or you own or that you know that i don't know or i don't have so i'm reaching out to you and i'm putting you yes. on a pedestal so the person being asked for being asked mm-hmm. feels good that look it's being acknowledged that i'm good at something so i find that most people are very happy mm. to help it's just our hesitancy that we don't ask yes. for it and then when it gets rejected a few times we then become we start looking inwards our ego comes in the way, in the way. Mm. so just keep asking yeah. this is what we tell our students to do keep asking and you'll get the help you need yeah yeah don't take it personally yeah, if somebody yeah. doesn't respond it's okay just yeah yeah i think i i actually i was just talking to somebody a student and you know they were feeling shy to ask somebody yeah. to refer them for a job in their organization and yeah. if you never ask you'll never know i mean that person may just benefit from referring you as well by yeah. getting a bonus yeah. right so yeah, i found on linkedin and, every time you help ask. people you benefit because your network increases and they feel very obliged yes. that you have given them the help then they try and compensate you this is human nature to say look i got mahesh help now i need to make up and try and help her and what she is doing so this is um, yeah. helping people i think is, is is beneficial to everybody yes definitely and i love what you said in the book is uh, it's not about i've not achieved something but it's not yeah. i've not achieved something yet <laughs> so you know like putting the yet somewhere yeah. uh, and, and just telling yourself that I'm on this journey. Somebody didn't reply. It's okay. I can still send another message to somebody else. And you're giving away too much of our book, Mahesh. No one will buy our book. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no. There's so much to, so much more in the book. We've only, I think, covered yeah. maybe one or two percent. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Book, so these are not really... our concepts. These are concepts that are there in in literature. They are there in research. We have just taken them out from from the research papers that sit in libraries or on databases. converted them to simple english and spun yeah. stories around them because people remember stories so one co- contract we had is till a story was amusing we won't put it in so there were lots of stories we left out but all these stories have 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 frameworks oh, no. behind them and have lessons which young people will really enjoy how oh, lovely i i i definitely uh, enjoyed and i i can't tell you like uh, it was actually like examples and research broken down into simple bits and that's what your book was about i'm i'm sure you're saying that all this information yeah. is probably on google somewhere but you've collated it accumulated it for people to read in one go and and, and that's fantastic thank you so much for coming on uh, and talking to me today i am sure the readers will enjoy reading your book but any final words that you well, would like I, to say to everybody i think watching? um it's it's something it's it's a great investment in yourself to develop these habits and this is not something which is meant for people who are just starting out it's meant for everybody so i have a 9 year old and i read yes. lots of stories to him from this 
um and uh, and then there is uh, oh, people who are in their 50s and 60s who have also written to us and said that they've loved what they've seen and heard, read and they've been able to apply some of it so so go out there and uh, enjoy the book and and share uh, what you like the most with us there is a way to and there by the way we also have a website so you can download a lot of the templates that we've talked about so um it's called leapfrog.work yes. um you you'll find a lot of very interesting material there as well wonderful thank you so much uh, mukesh no, i'm so fine i think we're not to leap frog by picking up these practices and uh, these practices are rather broad but there are pillars under each practice so if you study those pillars the practices yes. come automatically so these 18 pillars and even if you can't pick them all up you pick up a few and you start using them you'll see the mm. results coming in and that will spur you to read further and start implementing them we are learning from our own book honestly i mean we are we are that's how we collaborated that's how we we had intellectual humility to go to to other faculty and other researchers and say look we don't know anything about your field can you help us and they shared so i think oh, yeah. we, can, we can all practice lots of stuff from book wonderful i'm i'm sure you learned a lot writing the book also yes. reading all these research papers etc fantastic <laughs> great thank you so much both of you uh, it was lovely speaking with you meeting you so much to learn from you um, and i'm sure the readers would learn so much from from your book leap frog once again please get your copy asap and thank you uh, mehar yeah, thank, thank you, you so much, much. Have yeah, a good weekend. Sure. bye 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 bye, bye.